Welcome to this video. Today we are in San Francisco, but not the San Francisco we know today. We are in San Francisco as it was in the 1930s. That means everything is black and white. Some call of the year wasn't invented yet. And piano music. So we're now in the San Francisco Trans Bay Terminal Station. Three different companies are operating at this station. The Oakland Key System trains, the Interurban Electric Railway and the Sacramento Northern. And that's what this video is about. So we're right now in the SN class 1003, which was built by the W.L. Holman Car Company of San Francisco in 1912, so over 100 years ago, and it also looks like that. But what is definitely not typical for that time, that the train is electric and that it has an in-cab signaling system, which shows the current track speed. That system works with transponders that are placed along the route, and these transponders tell the train what's the current speed limit. A similar system which is still in use today in American passenger trains is the ATC safety system. And when you overspeed, the system will trigger a bell and about 30 seconds after that, when you're still overspeeding, an air pressure piston will reset the train completely and it applies an emergency brake. This system is really advanced, as you can see, and it's kind of unbelievable that a system like this was in use in the early 20th century. But the system doesn't work after you cross Oakland, because there are no more transponders along the route. And by the way, do you know the fastest way to get from San Francisco to Oakland? Right, over the bay. But how did you get over the bay back then? Well, in the really early years of the Sacramento Northern, trains were loaded on a ferry operated by the Oakland Key system and brought to the other side of the bay. But with the opening of the Bay Bridge in 1939, the trains were going over that, literally, and the lower level of the Bay Bridge there was a railroad. But that is not the only surprising thing about that route. When you enter Oakland, you normally expect that the trains have their own route, their own tracks. But the Sacramento Northern shared the tracks with the Oakland Key System trains all the way through Oakland. And not only passenger trains, also freight trains. In the US it's still sort of normal that trains and freight trains are going over a street, but the SN was going almost the entire 40th street in Oakland. Okay, after we literally crossed Oakland, we have to cross a slightly mountainous area. In that section, the inclines over 4% and the only tunnel on the route. And this is not a little 100 meter tunnel, the tunnel is over 1 kilometer long. This is also the highest point of the route. Behind the tunnel at Eastport, we enter a little canyon.
Behind that canyon, the landscape is flat and empty. There are only a few little villages and not really much vegetation. But then we're getting to another bay, the Susun Bay. The route continues a bit along the bay and near to the tracks of the Southern Pacific and ATSF. But then it crosses these tracks below and we reach Pittsburgh Junction. I have no idea if this is the name of this, at least there's a city called Pittsburgh nearby. And there the route splits, one part goes to the city of Pittsburgh and one towards the bay. Getting to the really end of the shore, to Mallard Island, there is a little dock. And that dock is reserved for train ferries. Yeah, and that time it was kinda common that the trains are going by ferries. And it's still not gone today, though there's still trains going on a ferry to cross the Baltic Sea, for example. You can't go to the other side of the bay in Zim. The route ends there at the ferry. Normally it would continue to the city of Sacramento, the capital of California today. But the route is definitely not long enough to see how the life was in the 1930s. Okay, now we take a closer look at our train. As I mentioned earlier, it's uh, it's equipped with a really advanced system, but this only works till Oakland, that's only a short piece of the route. The weird thing about this train is, it's equipped with a system that shows the maximum speed, but there is no speedometer in the train. You can't see your speed, you only hear the bell when you're overspeeding, but you don't know how fast you really are. By the way, here you see a picture of one of these trains in Oakland, and here you see a picture of the same train, colorized. Yes, one of these trains is in driving condition today, over 100 years after it was built. And this is really the only still existing SN Class 1003 train in the world. All the others were scrapped or damaged in the Second World War or due to other reasons. In this picture you see how damaged the train was before it was restored. It was restored in the early 2000s by the Western Railway Museum, which you can see with it today. Not today, we all know why, but you can ho hopefully visit it, visit it again soon. And it's a museum in the middle of nowhere, California. This is not the only train you get with this route, you also get the SN Class 650 steeple cab. The club models were built by General Electrics. And the first one was delivered to the Sacramento Northern Railway in 1923. It was mostly used for freight and shunting operations, but also helping out when passenger trains are getting stuck or inoperable. You get this train in two different liveries, a pre-war livery, which was used before World War II, and a post-war livery with these yellow stripes that was used after World War II. And like with the SN Class 1003, one of these steeple cabs were restored by the Western Railway Museum, which is the number 654, and it's also in driving condition and works completely fine. The DLC comes with 18 scenarios, but only 3 of them are for the SN steeple cab, but there is a ton of workshop scenarios you can download. Most of them were created by that guy, like this one where we have to drive at night time. And I also found some good scenarios created by Trainsome Fan. He made six really cool scenarios with the SN Class 650 train. Unfortunately, one of these scenarios don't work on my PC, but don't worry about that. It should work properly and on your PC, it's just. Maybe my train is just cursed, I don't know. In these scenarios, you have to deliver freight through the Badlands and just chase the passenger train like a BMW driver. carrying the freight train at blue hour. And by the way, he also has a YouTube channel where he uploads videos about train simulator. But not only train simulators from Dove the Games, he recently uploaded a video about completely different train simulator games which are not made by Dove the Games. So, you should really check him out.
Okay, with that we're at the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Now you saw how the San Francisco area looked like in the 1930s. And it was something that you don't see really often and this principle that you'll see is not very popular at all. Well, I don't know if some people even watching this video. Well, bye. Deja vu, I just been in this place